Hi everybody, it's Nikki again. Um, this video is my personal experience, not to be used as medical advice and in no way to, to be confused as encouragement for people to do this thing. Um, I've had somebody come on and ask me how I calibrated my calibration factor um, at stable, like what, how I determined what my stable calibration factor was. Um, and so I figured I've been using my calibration factor every day and in a million ways. Um, and I think that I'm ready to make a video just basically how you can maybe pin down that one where your number is stable. Um, because once you figure out what it is that's stable, then you, I have been able to um, estimate blood glucose when I've been away from my tester. And I have actually managed to go into auto using that and everything else. Um, but it's once you figure that piece out, then there's more that needs to be figured out because then you have to figure out what it means when you're rising, what it means when you're falling. You know, it, there's um, when it doesn't work, what its limitations are. There's all of this information, and I am, you know, plugging away at it every day, and I love it. Um, but it is a serious amount of work and a serious amount of commitment, you know, to figure it out. So I will start with this. Um, Okay, so the question was, how did I calculate my calibration factor at stable, I believe, is a 5.5. Um, I believe that because in the beginning I was seeing 5.5 all the time. I now don't see 5.5 very often, but I realized that I'm checking my calibration factor at a completely different time. Before, I was trying to learn what the calibration factor was, and that was the number I kept seeing. So I was testing it at random throughout the day. Now I am testing it when I want to see whether or not I'm moving. So I realize the only time I'm checking my calibration factor now is when I suspect that I'm moving. Um, so I rarely see a 5.5 because usually I suspect it for good reason and it's usually because I am moving. Um, so um, in the beginning, I had to test multiple times per day. Um, that's just what it was. and. And I had, and I, in general, the way I work it is every time I test my blood sugar, I would go ahead and calculate my calibration factor. Um, and because of the kind of loose standards for our testers, and because your calibration factor depends on your tester, um, I go ahead, I use two test strips at every sitting and occasionally a third one to, if, the, if I need to do like a tiebreaker, because if, if one blood sugar says a 100 and one says a 138, those are going to be two drastically different calibration factors and they would give me different information. Um, um, I now use rely on. I did another video about that. I am choosing my rely on almost all the time over my one touch. Um, and the rely on is really cheap in comparison for me. It's very cheap in comparison to my prescription ones. Um, and I, I test as often as I want to. And I now find that two test strips usually yield a very, very close number. So sometimes I'm just doing one. If I think it makes sense, I'm just doing the one. Um, but anyway, the point is you really need a good BG. So whatever you have to do to get a good BG is part of this step, um, part of this whatever equation. Um, so in the beginning, what I would do is I would test many times per day um, and I would do one to two test strips, three if need be, um, in order to make sure I had a good BG and I would calculate using my ISIG and I would get a calibration factor. Um, because you want something that's stable, you have to choose times when you might be stable, which I do think is harder on the 670 um, than before, but it was on the 670 that I determined my 5.5, so I think it's possible. Um, in the morning, before you eat, when you're fasting, you know, assuming you've been in auto and you're not crashing, or you know, whatever it is, or you're not experiencing dawn phenomena, you know, whatever it is, um, that might be a good time. That's definitely a good place to start. Um, I used to have a 5.5 every morning and then I started late night snacking um, that changed my calibration factor in the morning and I think that's because of the Samoji effect. Um, that's another video maybe or it's just a lesson for myself to stop eating at night but um, anyway so if you do if you're not a late night snacker you should be pretty stable in the morning if you've been in auto mode so that might give you a good number to start with um, and I can tell you that for myself my um, my stable is a 5.5, but my range is a 2.3 to a 10.3. Um, so I don't, I mean, so maybe, I don't have any idea. There is no manual, there's nobody to call, there's none of this. I'm just using this thing and I'm figuring out a lot and I'd like to share it. Um, but maybe a five to six maybe is reasonable for most people. I mean, I don't have any idea. Maybe you start there and see whether or not that could be it. Um, 
anyway, there's all this detective work. I mean, that's what it is. And that's why I said it. There's, you got to be kind of committed and be willing to put in all this work. I now have my number. I use it all day, every day for a million different things. Um, and that's, it's worth it to me. Okay. Um, all right. So I will do a quick one to show you again how it is that I calibrate mine. Unfortunately, I calculate mine. Unfortunately, I brought my one touch. I should have brought my rely on and I'm already five and a half minutes into this. So I got to book it. All right. So I got my one touch, which means I'll probably do two test strips and hope that they are close enough that it's not I'm knocking stuff off the table. Okay. First one is a 93. And I'll tell you right now that my SG is a 113. Okay, so my first one was a 93. I got a 93, a 113. And it doesn't matter what my SG is. That's the truth. That's not part of my... Oh, that's not part of what I'm... Look, that's not part of the equation. The, the equation is your BG divided by your ISIG. Okay, so my first one was a 93. My second... Well, is that's not hygienic a 111 see that's what i'm talking about right there a 93 and a 111 is just going to yield a different calibration factor but regardless i'll just i'll show you them both and i can't even count the sg because i just don't think it's worth counting okay um so i'm going to my to my I went to my status, I went to my sensor, I'm going down to my ISIG. My ISIG is a 23.73. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to take my 93, which was my first one, divided by 23.73 and I get a 3.9. Yes, okay. My second one I said was a 111 divided by 23.73. It's a 4.6. So you can see that as long as you have a big number a big difference in numbers, it's going to show you two different things. A 3.9 for me means that I either have been very low and I'm slowly recovering, or it could mean I'm still dropping. 4.6 means I'm nearing that stable again, so I might be kind of on my way back. Um, I don't know what those two mean, so it's not a good example, and I wasn't, well, it's not a bad example. I wasn't here to explain why I was seeing what I was seeing. I was here to show you how to, to calculate it. Um, if I were doing this without the video right now, I would go and I'd do a third test strip and I would see which one it is. Um, I know I've been low and I know I'm in auto mode, so it could be any which way. Um, which also brings me to the other part of the calibration factor is that there are times it's limited. And when I get so that I'm not sure what it is showing me, I set my timer, I do it again in 15 minutes because what the calibration factor will do is it will move in one direction or the other. Um, so if I continue to climb, it's because I'm getting ready to rise, you know, or I'm stabling out. And if it continues to drop, it means I'm getting ready to drop again. So um, that was it. So about the thing, I said, you got to test it over and over again. You got to really try for times where you think you're stable. Um, and then even then, you just have to do it for a couple of days. I mean, I think it probably took me a solid, I'm going to say three, four days, maybe even a week, where every time I tested, I tested my calibration factor. And I would kind of just take a look at it and see um, which number was coming the most often. Um, my range is a 2.3 to a 10.3. Every now and then I see a 10.3 and every now and then I see a 2.3, but I see a lot in, you know, I could narrow it down if I needed to at this point, if I didn't know what that number was. This is turning out to be not helpful <laughs> at all. It's really hard to explain. Um, Anything else? I do get very nervous about making videos about calibration factors for a few reasons. The number one is that there is no manual, there's nobody to call, so I might be wrong. Um, I have to say that, okay? It hurts, but I have to say that. Two is the factor still relies on your BG, which as you can see, that can cause a problem. So I have just decided to test you know, and use many test strips. I use my rely on, they're cheap. I can afford to do that. Um, I couldn't do it on my one touch prescription. Okay. Um, and then um, it can still be limited. And I mentioned that because sometimes it's kind of just unclear what it means. And in that case, it's a little bit unclear to me. So I would set my timer and I'd say in 15 minutes, I'm going to look again because if I'm really starting to fall, it would drop. You know, maybe my next one would be a three, six or a three, three, or if I'm really starting to climb, my next one might be at a six. I mean, like it would, you know, so it will show me something. 
um, but not every calibration factor is a helpful one. And um, the last one is that it takes some serious time and commitment and you have to like try it on for yourself and it's, it can be tricky and it can be a little bit mind boggling. Um, with that being said, all of those things have been true for me and I use mine day in and day out and I really like it and it's, I'm at 10 minutes. That's it. I'll make another video if anybody wants. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Good luck. Bye.